welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and I'm back for another episode. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed the kind of flashback rewind episodes the last couple weeks. I needed a little time to kind of get myself together and gather my thoughts. But in that time, um, one of the things I didn't post, but I had talked about previously was the legacy conversations that I hosted back on August 5th. Um, if you didn't get a chance to attend live, I have, rec we did record it and that is now available on uh, the YouTube channel as well. So be sure to take some time and check that out because as I mentioned before, our legacy is at, at, at the end of the day, that's kind of all we have. Uh, reminds me, you know, my word is my bond. My word is all I have. So as I am, or as we are taking the time to develop and create our legacies, it's important that we do what we need to do to ensure that that legacy continues even beyond us. And if this year has um, taught us anything else, if nothing else, it's that life is short. You just never know what is going to happen or when and it is much better to be prepared than to find yourself in a situation where you are you know a loved one is going through something medically or they lose their life unexpectedly and you just you didn't have anything prepared you didn't know what to do and that just adds a lot of extra stress onto an already stressful and difficult situation so like i said be sure to check that out um, as well as some of the previous episodes. But with all of that being said, I want to go ahead and get into today's or this week's episode. Um, and before doing that, just want to reflect, I guess, share some things that I am grateful for uh, over the last few weeks. And one, just being life um, and being, being alive, being healthy. As I mentioned, it's just, you just never know and I know there are a lot of people dealing with different things. And so I'm grateful to be alive. And even though I have my moments, um, it's important to remember that, hey, at the end of the day, I woke up today and I'm in my right mind for the most part, uh, but I am enjoying it. And also grateful for some of the shows that have been added to Netflix. And I know there was a lot of hype before, you know, when it got announced that a lot of the shows from the 90s or early 2000s, specifically some black sitcoms that were being added, like Girlfriends, uh, Moesha, The Parkers, Half and Half, The Game. Um, I'm probably missing, I think maybe Sister, Sister. I might be making that up. That might be wishful thinking on my part. But one of them that I have been watching recently that was a favorite then and I am loving it even more now is the game now i was one of the ones that started watching when it originally aired on upn before it became cw um like i remember when they sh they aired the pilot episode and they used girlfriends to introduce it but if you have not if you didn't watch it then you have a great opportunity now to watch it i think it has aged fairly well there were a few kind of eh, cringeworthy moments in the first season in terms of just some of the language or the way they talked about certain topics. But overall, I think it aged very well and I love it just as much now as I did then. Um, and there's just so many gems, it was so great. I forgot how much that, I guess how much happened in the first season, um, just between Melanie and Derwin and Malik and Tasha and everyone else and definitely just the problematic things between Kelly and Jason and their relationship. Um, just so many different uh, toxic things that I noticed in terms of just the dynamic of the relationship. And even as much as I love Melanie and Derwin, uh, the way that, I guess, the way Melanie handled some things, I don't believe that I would have handled them the same way. But obviously, it's one, it's fictional and I wasn't in the situation, but I'm really loving it. And it's been great to kind of go back and watch it and also reflect on how much of a difference there was between the original three seasons and then when it switched over to BET. Um, I kept watching because I was one of the people who signed the petition to bring the show back. And so 
out of a sense of loyalty and just this hopefulness that it was it's gonna get back to what it was I kept watching um, and one of the things that I have noticed in watching and then just talking to friends is that one of the biggest shifts between the original three seasons and the uh, final seasons were that one the production changed and also it went from being more of a comedy to a drama kind of like soap opera feel and it was just even like visually darker and everything just got so much more serious now it was still a good show and I think for someone who maybe they just started watching and didn't have any reference to the original seasons it's still a, it was still a good show it was a decent storyline it was just different and it was disappointing in that respect but nevertheless I watched it I'm sad a little annoyed at how you all did Melanie and Derwin and you know got rid of them or wrote them out but it was their show it was their prerogative they did what they wanted to do with it but I'm happy that I can now see the original three seasons again I'm almost through them so I guess that was kind of like my gratitude moment and a bit of a little review so if you have not ever heard of the show the game or you've never watched it like I said we're still in some level of quarantine so it's on Netflix so be sure to take some time and watch that but one of the other things that kind of I guess I thought about in watching um, or in rewatching the game is just the whole notion of adulting and just how there are so many shifts in in life and the process of it because in looking at you can look at all of the different relationships um, in the show and one of the things I did appreciate was the progression that was shown in terms of the um, characters individually as well as within their relationships. Um, looking at Jason and Kelly how it started off of just he was very controlling and Kelly was just very much docile doing any and everything that Jason wanted and getting very creative because he was beyond cheap and frugal um, to how she kind of grew into her own and learned found her voice and started speaking up for herself and demanding respect and demanding that he treat her the way that she deserves and even just how that shifted in their relationship um her beginning to work outside of the house um that type of thing and then with Melanie and Darwin them you know initially Melanie giving up everything to follow him out to San Diego to follow his dream but still trying to pursue hers even with them breaking up and the different things that happen and them getting back together um, but in that process her realizing or learning how to live on her own to take care of herself because prior to you know she was at home with her parents they took care of her and then after even in college her parents were her support system they took care of her and then she came to San Diego and it was Derwin and she was relying on him which by the way it would be great if somebody was paying my tuition like with no strings attached that's beautiful but anywho uh, but just looking at that progression, it got me to thinking about this whole, you know, trust the process because one of the reasons or kind of uh, motivations behind me even doing this podcast is about learning to enjoy the journey, um, trusting the process and not getting so focused on a destination of, okay, things will be great when I do this or when I get this, when I get there. And to me, amongst all of the other things that are covered in the show, it was just a great reminder of, hey, life is messy and life changes and you can prepare and you can plan as best as possible, but you got to be ready to pivot. And 2020 has also been a year full of pivots whether you wanted to or not you have been forced in many ways to pivot the country the world has been forced to pivot um school the way school is done the way we work the way we socialize like everything has shifted and it's just another aspect of the process or this journey that is life and in looking at all of these pivots i can say that i have some willingly some begrudgingly I have done I feel like I've done a decent job of pivoting and kind of making the best or making the most of the situation that is 
COVID-19 um, and adapting. But to be honest, there are days and times that I'm just like, okay, I don't, I don't know what else to do or how, like, is it over yet? Or are we done? Like I think about back when I was a kid and you're on a trip and it's just like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Because the, the virtual, virtual happy hours, the virtual parties or virtual meetings, um, everything being over Zoom uh, or Google Meet or Microsoft Teams, whatever platform you're using, I was very much like, okay, I'm game. We're going to do this. And that's great because I want to be safe and we're going to adapt and I will do what I need to do. Uh, and then, you know, thought things were going to start. We started opening back up prematurely, in my opinion, but I, that's not up to me. But now that it is now August and in March, when everything started, I honestly thought that, okay, by the time August comes around, we would have been shut down, everything, they've kind of figured it out, we've got it under control, and we'll be kind of reopening, getting back to, not necessarily to normal, but some level of normalcy, where we are back outside and kind of moving about similar to how we had before. But the realization now is like, yeah, no, that's not happening we're not there and life as we know it is you know is not going back if this is this is the reality now and so the challenge is trying to figure out how do i kind of get back to living in a sense of yes working from home or working remotely for those who are able to, school is virtual, um, like that's, or it's, there's going to be a hybrid model, restaurants and stores and things are back open, but you know, wearing a mask is, that is the normal, that is a part of the routine of, you know, when I leave the house, let me make sure I have a mask because no matter where I go, a mask is necessary. And okay, cool, I get that. But the other challenge is there is where I am of okay. I get it, this is the case, I need to be safe, but I can't continue staying in the house and doing nothing because that right mind that I woke up with, it's, I feel as though all of this, it is it's testing my sanity to an extent, it's testing my peace of mind. And so it's trying to figure out what is the the medium or what is the happy beating happy medium or the balance of it and i've been talking to some friends um and kind of we share similar thoughts in that okay i want to be safe i understand there's a risk but at the same time i need to get back out and do things i want to travel now granted traveling outside of the country is very limited right now because Americans are not welcomed many places. Our passport is not very good. But even with that in mind, it's a matter of, okay, where can I go within the country? Um, but doing so safely. And, and what is what is traveling safely now? What does that look like? Or is it safe to go back out and go to restaurants? I know that there are people who are doing it and you're wearing a mask or you're eating outside and then even some people eating inside or going back to doing like the movies are supposed to be movie theaters are supposed to be opening back up soon and as much as i enjoy that is it and i that used to be a great kind of just uh that was like a weekly thing for me of just like kind of my thing of getting away doing something for myself kind of part of my self-care specifically five dollar tuesdays with amc but it's as much as i enjoy that and i appreciate it is it is it worth going back to the theater just yet like should i wait well i know that i'll be waiting at least a little while to see how it goes but on the flip side of that i do have some friends who are still very much concerned like kind of, they were kind of germaphobes before and now it's yeah i'm not doing you know they're still just not up to or willing to do anything because there you know there has not been a vaccine created they have not they have yet to develop or at least make available to the public uh, the rapid testing so that you know quicker in terms of what your test results are 
and the fact that you know there's several people who can have the virus but be asymptomatic and so you just don't know if you have it or not and if you're you know passing it on to someone else and i understand those concerns and i want to be respectful of that but one of the challenges i've i've been having is trying to figure out how to how to navigate that of okay I understand and I want to respect you, but I also want and need you to respect my thoughts and my views as well, because I have found that in some instances, in some conversations, it's for those who are not yet ready to go back out or do anything, whether it is intentional or not, there is almost this kind of this undertone of, of judgment or kind of making one and the other person or parties to feel guilty because they are going out and doing things. And it's it's like, okay, we all have gotta figure out what's best for us. And, you know, we are entitled to our opinions. How you feel is how you feel. How I feel is how I feel. But like I said, that's just one thing that I have been contemplating or just trying to figure out, but I can't say that I have it completely figured out, but where I am at this point is I've got to do what's best for me. And as much as I would love to have everyone or as many people involved in going out and doing things, it's, hey, if you're not ready or if you're not comfortable, then so be it. I will respect that. And you let me know when you are. And if necessary, we will continue to do the virtual thing, social distance and that. I will talk to you over the phone or we'll do some type of video chat to see each other. Uh, but I am ready to start living again or living outside again. And not to say that I haven't been living, but I, I know that some aspects of that have been put on hold uh, due to, you know, COVID and necessarily so and even to that in that kind of getting back to living because I feel like I kind of in some ways I reverted or slid into some level some space of survival like surviving versus thriving in that okay gotta work from home we can't do this all right so I only go out for groceries or if it's necessary you know I go for walks ride bikes do things outside but otherwise I am very much in the house a lot like a lot like at least outside of going for a walk usually that is the only time I'm leaving the house and then if I get in my car to go somewhere it's like once maybe twice a week um and even that there's a whole like working from home the whole concept of work-life balance which I feel like I had gotten a pretty good hang of before that whole work-life balance thing has gone all the way out the window these last several months because I am work is work is home home is work and so in some instances I'm working a lot more because it's just here it's wake up log on um and, and then some days it's okay it's this is just too much I don't want to do anything and productivity is, is decreasing. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I was doing really good about, I had my schedule and my routine, get up. You know, I set my office up in the living room. So, okay, get up, I'm going to work and I'm gonna be at work for X number of hours, take my lunch break. And then when the work day is over, I leave the living room, come back into my room. So then at, that way, at least there is some level of separation. I'll be honest, somewhere around May or June, that got old that that stopped um and the room became <laughs> the office and home uh and so routine has definitely kind of gone by fallen by the wayside and so one of the things that I'm working to do is to reestablish a routine uh, essentially a new routine and one that works because at this point I know for the foreseeable future I will be working at home. And so one of the things that I did was I got a new desk um, and set up a more formal working space because it's like, okay, this is this is it for now. And so you need to make it, you know, incorporate it into a part of life. And so kind of getting back to setting, 
or establishing set working hours or working times. Um, and so there's time for when I'm doing my day job, time for podcast related things and times for some of my other projects. And then also figuring out or creating like what the social life is going to be for now going forward. Um, because workouts or like kind of outdoor bike rides have become, they've become kind of a twofold workout as well as social outing because that is has been one of the safer ways to interact with people is being outside and then keeping distance. So riding my bike, I am at a safe distance from my friends as we're riding or just other people going for walks. Um, I've gone on a hike, going to sunflower fields, uh, just different things like that. And also one of the things I've seen and some of my friends have talked about doing is kind of an outdoor picnic cookout kind of um, set up where we are outside and you're still able to be socially distanced, but still see people in real life. Uh, so those are some of the things, like I said, that I have been thinking about or I'm planning to do in terms of uh, implementing it and create and letting that be the new, I guess, ap not appearance, but redefining work-life balance for myself in terms of working from home. Because I know there are some people who they had worked from home before. Like I know one friend and, and she was saying that she was already working from home. So the working from home part wasn't a challenge. The challenge came in in that although she was always working from home, when work ended, she could go somewhere to meet up with friends for happy hour or for dinner or, you know, whatever the, you were still going out to interact with people. And now it's work is at home, socializing is at home or all the interaction is at home. And granted, like I said, it's not as restricted as it was a few months ago. Um, but for some people, it is still that way because they are apprehensive, um, understandably so, about going out and doing things. And so I know that there are still some people who are having, they're having their groceries delivered. They're having uh, like all your food, any and everything, I guess. There's a lot of stuff that you can have delivered. And so there are still some people who are living in that way. Um, and I say more power to you. I tried it. It does not work for me. I've got to get outside and get some fresh air, see other people, have interactions in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but, hey, it is what it is. But I guess some of the questions that I've had, like that I've been asking myself, as well as that I'm curious to know from those of you listening or watching is kind of what does kind of how did you define work-life balance before and is that any different or does it look different than what it was then as to part in terms of like what you've had to do now to create that balance and then once you've figured it out what do you do to what are you doing to maintain it because the maintaining it part is one of my challenges in that okay I'll do great for a couple days or even a week two weeks and then this is kind of like oh I'm still in this house. It hasn't changed. I'm still here. So I just kind of get in my little like, all right, well, it's not going anywhere. I can do it. Or if I don't get it done right now, I can do it a little bit later. And then procrastination sets in. So I am curious to know, um, and I hope you will let me know in the comments of just what is work-life balance to you? Uh, what does it look like now? And what are the most important parts? What are you doing to maintain it? I am open to suggestions and will implement them in my day to day. And so that is pretty much all I had for now. Um, one thing that I guess something else in terms of the balance or figuring things out is or that I have begun to do in terms of trying to maintain is being more intentional each day about reflecting on what I'm grateful for. Just like gratitude is, it's always important, but 
it's become even more instrumental into me maintaining the uh my sanity um in these recent months of just taking the time to reflect of what i do have as opposed to what i don't um, because i'm not sure about you all but for me it is it is often easy to focus or dwell on what i don't have or what i haven't done where i can't go um and and in doing that that gets very depressing it gets it's that you know get very down and sad and it's easy to get into a funk and so to combat that um i like i said i try to focus on the things that are going well like what i do have where i can go um <laughs> traveling is I had a few things planned in terms of travel this year that, you know, haven't happened. And I'm hopeful that come 2021, maybe by the fall, those those things can uh, resume. But in terms of focusing on what I do have or what I have done, it's like remembering that it's been about a year since I really got serious about creating this podcast and August 28th will mark one year since the first episode launched and in looking back at just the different episodes the people that I have been able to interact with in terms of having on the show as co-host um it's been really fun it's been it has been challenging it's been a great learning experience but overall I am grateful and appreciative in that there was an idea and it got executed and it hasn't looked exactly the way I thought it would or how I want it to all of the time but it's happening and for that I am grateful I am grateful for each and every one of you who listen whether you listen consistently or you listen sporadically or this is your very first episode that you are seeing or hearing um I say thank you and we're going to continue as like I said, as I, as I continue to learn to enjoy the journey, enjoy adulting, because I say, have said very often, I'm a reluctant adult and I don't like adulting. Um, there are definitely days where I enjoy it more than others, but with all that being said, it's about the process. Um, it's not about a destination. And so before I get out of here, I just want to share my random shower thought for the week. And that is related to baths. Like I said, I told you a lot of these things are related to, to, to water. Um, but I'm a one. I enjoy baths. Don't take them very often. But... I don't like the concept or the thought of sitting in dirty water or sitting in my dirt, whatever, however you do it. So when I do take a bath, I typically will take a shower first, let everything out and then fill up the tub. So that way I am, I am clean and then I'm sitting in water, I'm soaking and then it's all clean. But I know that people do these things differently. Like I know some will, they'll take their, they'll run the bath water, they sit, they soak, they do everything and then they let it out and then they shower. And then there are some, I'm sure, who they fill the bath of water with everything, all their good stuff. They wash off and then they soak and they get out and that's it. So how do you bath? Like what's your bath protocol or procedure? How do you do it? Because um, like I said, for me, the thought of just sitting in dirt, ugh, it's it, mm -mm, it doesn't work for me. So let me know what are your thoughts and... Thanks again for listening. Um, have some special, I guess, not necessarily special announcement, but some exciting things that I'll share um, coming up related to getting to one year of doing the podcast. But thank you all for listening. Remember that despite how it looks or feels, um, in the end, it is all working out for your good. And it is about the process learning to enjoy it trusting the process enjoying this journey so do your best to enjoy it reflect on what you have as opposed to what you don't have and until next time <laughs>